welcome back to Salix Studio. As it's Christmas coming and as it's Monday today, it means that today we're going to read some interesting Christmas stories. Moreover, I've got a very interesting Christmas book for you. Yes, and there are actually more than 20 interesting stories. Unfortunately, we will read just few of them. Uh, but I promise they are really amazing. So today we are going to start to read a Christmas story which is called A Christmas Carol. Ebenezer Scrooge hunched over his account books while his clerk, Bob Cratchit, huddled at a desk in the outer office nearly frozen. I've come to invite you for Christmas dinner, said Scrooge's nephew Fred, as he cheerfully entered his office. Bah, I'm back, muttered Scrooge. You're wasting my time. Oh, he's an old man who doesn't love Christmas. I know this type of stories, actually, but this must be a very interesting one. When Fred opened the door to leave, the sound of carolers filled the office. Scrooge banged his window open. You there! Scrooge shouted down to the carolers. Find another street for your noise! As you see in this picture, he's really angry man. Yes. Critchit taped on Scrooge's door. I finished his letter and paperwork. If your work is finished, you may leave, said Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge, said Cratchit, tomorrow is Christmas. You'd like the day off? Scrooge asked. It is Christmas, sir, said Cratchit. Fine, take tomorrow off. Scrooge shook his head. But be here early the next day. Yes, sir, Cratchit said. Merry Christmas. Hamburg, growled Scrooge. Bob Cratchit scurried out. At the corner, boys were sledding. Cratchit leaped onto one of the sleds and slid down, slid to the bottom of the hill. Fool! Scrooge called. Scrooge touched, crouched home. Yeah, I sit a bit comfortable. So Scrooge trudged home to eat his dinner. Alone by the fire. So he has no family but his nephew. Clank, Scrooge froze. Clank, he rubbed his eyes. This isn't a dream, Ebenezer. A voice echoed through Scrooge's bedroom. A man, pale and ghostly, drifted into the room. It was Scrooge's old business partner, Jacob Marley. Scrooge said, but, but you're dead, the ghost nodded, and pain for my sins. All I did was work. I never learned the value of love. Now I wander the earth, unable to find peace. The same fate awaits for you, Ebenezer, unless you change your ways. Three spirits will visit you. The first will arrive when the clock strikes one. In this picture he looks a bit frightened. Yeah. Boom! The clock struck one. Scrooge peeked out from beneath his sheets. A shimmering woman stood behind, beside his bed. I am the ghost of Christmas past. She said. The room dissolved and Scrooge was staring into the window of another room. That's me, a child, said Scrooge. It was Christmas, the ghost explained. Where were your parents? Working, Scrooge whispered. They worked hard to give me what I needed. Did they give you what you need? The boy Looked to fair, but his eyes were sad. I don't know, Scrooge said. We 
We have many places to visit, said the ghost. Come. Yeah, this, lo this boy looked pretty sad. You see, it was Christmas, and even in childhood, he was alone. So actually, you know, these are, there are a lot of stories where um, the old men or women don't like some holidays like Christmas or maybe their own birthdays while due to some, some traumas from their childhood. So, the house faded and in, and in its place stood an office. I worked here, said Scrooge. I was apprenticed to Mr. Fetzwick. Stop your work, announced Mr. Fetzwick. It's Christmas Eve! And Fiddler began playing. Mr. Fetzwick and his wife danced a lively jig. The ghost glanced at Scrooge. This certainly isn't the firm of Scrooge and Marley, is it? Do you recognize the clerk? It's Scrooge whispered. The young Scrooge clapped. His eyes were bright. His cheeks were pink. So different from Scrooge's own clerk, Bob Cratchit. So yeah, as you can see in this picture, perhaps this man in like in uh, green clothing is young Ebenezer Scrooge. Actually, I think so. The music faded. Petzvik's office dissolved into darkness. We have one more stop, said the ghost. The ghost waved her arms. Scrooge saw his younger self again, sitting beside a woman. I can't marry you, Ebenezer, the woman cried. You love money more than me. Suddenly, Scrooge could see the woman was a few years older. He was in a parlor that had been brightly decorated for Christmas. Children played at her feet. Your children? Her Scrooge asked. The girls nodded. They could have been yours. The man entered the parlor, his arms filled with presents. The children ran to hug him. The man leaned down and kissed his wife. Stop! Scrooge cried, take me home! Bong! Bong! The clock struck two. A man, glowing and transparent, stared down at Scrooge. I am the ghost of Christmas present, he said. Come! The bedroom vanished, and Scrooge found himself on a snowy, busy street. Everyone looks so... Happy, said Scrooge. It's Christmas, said the ghost. Scrooge shook his head. You mean they all woke up happy because it's Christmas? Yes, the ghost said. Today everyone enjoys their blessings. Can you do that? Scrooge closed his eyes. The aroma of freshly baked bread filled the morning air. Scrooge realized he was smiling. That's strange. The ghost led Scrooge into a tiny house. A man sat with his children. The man looked up. He was Scrooge's clerk, Bob Cratchit. Cratchit lives here, Scrooge whispered. The ghost nodded. A woman carried a platter to the table. Their turkey is nothing but bones, said Scrooge. Bob Cratchit carried a boy to the table. The boy was thin and carried a crutch. Scrooge pointed. What's wrong? Tiny Tim is sick, said the ghost. They don't have money for a doctor. If the future remains unchanged, he will die. Tiny Tim raised his cup. Merry Christmas! God bless us, everyone. There must be something we can do for the boy, Scrooge said. Perhaps, said the ghost as he led Scrooge from the house. Scrooge found himself entering another dining room. 
one he recognized. My nephew's house, said Scrooge. The party guests were taking turns imitating well-known people, Fred said. Guess, who am I? Who I am? He pulled coins from his pocket, counted them, and muttered, Christmas! <laughs> Humbug! Ebenezer Scrooge! shouted the man. They're making fun of me, said Scrooge. And they always will, said the ghost, unless the future changes. Bong, bong, bong. Another ghost floated into the room. He wore a black cloak. So, if you can see... Yeah, as you can see in this picture, this ghost looks like the Dementor. Who are you? Scrooge asked. The Phantom said nothing. Mm -hmm. You must be the ghost of Christmas yet to come, said Scrooge. Are you here to teach me how to change? Scrooge followed the ghost, the ghost to the street in front of his counting house. The windows were dark. Three men stood out front. I know these fellows, said Scrooge. We're quite friendly. Oh, Scrooge, said one of the men. He must be near death if he's closed up shop. If I know Ebenezer, said another man, he'll work through his own <laughs> funeral. Listen how they speak of me, spluttered Scrooge. Why did you bring me here? The ghost drifted down the street. This is Scritch's house, Scrooge said. I've already been there. The spirit led Scrooge into a bedroom. Cratchit sat and held Tiny Tom's hand, crying. We were happy last time I was here, whispered Scrooge. The bedroom door opened and Mrs. Cratchit came in. Did you talk to Mr. Scrooge? She asked, will the old mister help us? Bob Cratchit shook his hand. He says, he won't help those who can't help themselves. But Mr. Scrooge's nephew offered to help. I pray it's not too late, Mrs. Cratchit wept. The ghost turned toward the door. No, cried Scrooge, we must help him. The Cratchit's house faded and they were outside. The clouds filled the sky, and an icy wind whipped through the trees. This is a cemetery, said Scrooge. Oh no, no tiny team! This can't be his grave! The ghost pointed at a new grave. A priest stood alone praying. Where are the creatures? Scrooge asked. Why did no one come to the funeral? The ghost pointed at the headstone. On it were two words. Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge turned to the ghost. You must give me another chance to life! Scrooge opened his eyes. He was in his own room again. Scrooge scrambled from his bed. He flung open his window. The smell of bread drifted the air. Horses click-clopped over the cobblestones. What day is this? Scrooge asked the boy. Christmas morning, the boy said. Here, lad, Scrooge tossed a handful of coins to the boy. There's a big turkey in the butcher shop. Deliver it to the Bob Cratchit. The boy held up the coins. But you've given me too much. Keep the rest, Scrooge called. Merry Christmas, my boy. Thank you, sir, said the boy. Merry Christmas to you, too. Oh, he changed his behavior. Oh, I love this of like that. Scrooge dressed in his finest clothes and set off down the busy snowy street towards his nephew's house. A family hurried down the street toward the church, and Scrooge stopped to pat their young son on the head. Scrooge reached into his pocket for a coin and handed it to the boy. Buy yourself some Christmas candy. The boy stared at the coin. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas, said Scrooge. 
Merry Christmas to you, said the boy's mother, and God bless you. Scrooge hurried to his nephew's house. Uncle, Fred cried, have you come to celebrate the holiday with us? Yes, said Scrooge, if you will have me. After dinner, Scrooge stood. Thank you, he said. I've never eaten a more delicious meal, but I have another stop to make. Scrooge hurried to Bob Cratchit's house. Mr. Scrooge, said Mr. Mrs. Cratchit, how can we thank you for this wonderful turkey? Scrooge smiled. By enjoying every bite. Scrooge turned to her husband. Cratchit, it's time you got a race. Tiny Tom would finally get the medical treatment he needed. Ebenezer Scrooge celebrated Christmas all year long. He even sent Christmas carols in July. And each time he sat down to a meal, he'd raise his glass in a toast. God bless us, he'd say. God bless us, everyone. Oh, just look at this picture. They look so happy, especially Tiny Tom and Mr. Cratchit. Not Cratchit, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh my God, I'm sorry. But cr the Cratchit looks also very happy. Yes. This was the end of the first Christmas story. And we have, as I told you previously, we've got plenty of them to read. So, actually, I'm a bit Ebenezer Scrooge, but Ebenezer Scrooge in the end of the story, because I celebrate Christmas all year, yeah, during the year, and actually, I like it. I also sing Christmas carols. I like it. I like to watch some movies about Christmas, yes. I love Christmas, as I told you previously, and as you can see. So... Don't miss another Christmas story that I will be reading the next Monday. And Merry Christmas! Yes! Bye-bye!